Well, howdy folks. Welcome back to my channel. Last week, I published a video about this here, a monochord that I made in the garage. And I got a lot of questions on it, a lot of comments. And so I thought I'd do a follow-up video to talk just a little more about it. So first things first, um, this is my first attempt at making a monochord. And I'm not in any way, shape or form trying to say that these are the best dimensions or the best way to do it. I know very little about these things. I simply was using scraps I had on hand to, uh, you know, build one. I just got a wild hair and decided to build one. And in fact, the only part in this entire monochord that I had to buy were the strings themselves. All the tuners, the jacks, all the boards, the rubber feet on the back, everything um, I had on hand. The first time that I saw a monochord in person was at a store in Flagstaff, Arizona called Sacred Rights. And they make monochords there and they are thousands of dollars. But their monochords, instead of having 12 strings, they'll have 30, 40, 50 strings, sometimes more than that. And they're all tuned with zither pins. And I remember seeing them and just being, you know, enthralled with the sound of them. But I thought, if I was ever to build one of those, I would not use zither pins. So you notice I did not use zither pins. I used a pack of 12 string guitar tuners that I had on hand. So that's why you see 12 tuners. And if you look at it on this side, we've got six going that way and six going that way. Also during the video, there was a part where I taped some little paper templates to both ends before I drilled all these holes. And the reason for that is, instead of trying to measure it all out on the wood, I just measured it all out on paper because there's a lot of calculations here to make sure that you get everything lined up and you can see it's offset one way on this end and a different way on this end. I used, again, what I had on hand. So the top is one quarter inch pine and one quarter inch is pretty thick for a top of a string instrument. So if I use like an eighth or even a 332nd, I'd probably get a lot more resonance out of it and probably get some more acoustic volume. However, with that also comes uh, being more prone to feedback. And I'm surprised that with these piezo pickups, this has relatively little feedback. So maybe that quarter inch top was actually a blessing. Um, you notice there are two jacks and two piezos in there if you watch the video of me putting it together. I did that so I could plug it into a stereo reverb or stereo delay or a stereo chorus and actually get a true stereo. So that's why I wanted two of them. But you don't have to use both. If you use one, it's gonna be just as if, you know, if you only want to put one jack in there anyway, you'd have one piezo zone one jack. So I just used wood oil because I love the look of oak when you oil it up. Um, a lot of these seams and stuff, let's see if I can get a close up here like this. You can see it doesn't line up perfectly because this is all scraps. There are some things where it's, you know, it's not perfect workmanship, but again, it was kind of a prototype, just me kind of seeing if it would work. And I'm actually pretty pleased with it. Um, I screwed the back on opposed to gluing it. And that's why I use this. Uh, you can probably just kind of see the weather stripping sandwiched in there, but I used that to make sure it was, it was nice and uh, airtight. But then if I needed to go back and, you know, add more feedback prevention or something, I can get back in there to do that. Or maybe someday if I wanted to try to add a magnetic pickup, I can do that as well. Well, a couple things I would do differently. Um, again, I was using tuners I had on hand, but see how big the uh, buttons are on these tuners? I would use a tuner with a narrower button just because none of these hit, they're fine, they can all fully spin around without hitting. But they, you know, it is kind of cramped if you get a bunch of them that are kind of lined up. Uh, fortunately right now they aren't. Every place where I had any gaps, I put in wood filler and I wasn't thinking about it, I didn't use the stainable wood filler. So like some certain areas, like maybe right there, you can see the wood filler. Um, a few areas like right there where there was a gouge, you can see the wood filler and things like that. So, you know, if I use stainable wood filler, it probably would have come out a lot nicer or I could have just painted it, I suppose. Make sure you check out that video if you have not already because um, I do a lot of sound samples in there and stuff, but uh, here's what it sounds like. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in today. If you like what I do on this channel, I'd really appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button for me. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. See you guys soon.